Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about impulsion, energy, how gated horses need this to go into gait. And along with that, so I'm going to show you a video that is in the private training group as well, but it's, it's the whole video and you can kind of see examples of this. Uh, it's, it's the kind of video that's in my private training group. But why is impulsion important? So it's kind of funny. Um, I get a lot of people that tell me, oh, you know, my horse has plenty of impulsion. He just goes down the trail and, you know, I have to pull to slow him down. And the kind of funny story is that I'm like, um, that doesn't mean your horse has impulsion. That means your horse doesn't have brakes. So please don't confuse the two. Impulsion is your horse giving you energy when you ask for it. Also called energy or forward. What happens with a lot of horses, trotty and pacey horses, is they will be... I don't like the term lazy, but they'll be less energetic and snappy in their motion. And you can do head, so let's say if you pace your horse and you've done head down and you have head down really well, but when you speed your horse up, he kind of, he's walking with his head down, but you know, kind of dragging his feet and then you speed him up and he slowly speeds up and he goes into a pace and his head is low. Like, you're like, hey, Ivy, we nailed it. Head is down, but we have pace. Well, this video I'm going to show you is a horse. And I thought it was a, I thought I talked about more impulsion. I do near the end and it's like a 20 minute video. So, but I wanted you guys to see the whole process. So I'm not going to break it up. I'm going to let it play. But this is a pacey horse. Uh, he does start showing us some trot, but at the beginning he was completely pacey. And this is the second clinic I've worked with this horse at that summer. And he was extremely pacey at the beginning. So be aware, like this horse is pacey and it was high headed. We worked on head down. The owner took him home, worked on head down, brought him to the clinic. He would do head down, but still pace. So what I found is he would kind of pace walk. I should have used this horse in last week's uh, camel walk video but he would kind of pace walk. And if you sped him up, even with his head down, he would go into a pace. So there's a couple things I do to correct it. One is uh, when I ask him to go fast, I say, go fast now. The other thing is I actually do ask him to stay, to slow the walk down because he gets kind of do the pacey walk. So this is ties in really well with the camel walk video. And uh, I will paste the link in the description later if you haven't seen that. But again, don't mistake your horse's lack of brakes for having impulsion. Now, some horses have plenty of impulsion and they really don't need this. They go forward when the owner says, they're snappy about it and they're still pacey. And actually, one of the horses, more than pacey horses, even though that lots of pacey horses need this, the trotty horses, when you're doing the head up, they need actually a lot of go forward. They need a lot of energy. And a lot of times you'll hear people talking about gated horses and how they need that hind end to come underneath them. Well, having the right kind of energy, not head up and strung out energy going as fast as they want and on the forehand, but energy where they lower their head and they go fast from a good slow walk, that can sometimes be all it takes to pop a horse into gait. So don't mistake your horse's ability or your horse's lack of brakes for impulsion. And whether you have pacey or trotty horses, the ability to go right when you ask them is really important. So you will see I ride with the crop with this horse, um, but I don't use it the entire time. But a couple times where he's not going forward, I do use it. So I'm going to be uh, playing this video. Feel free to comment and I will ask. The video is 20 minutes long, but there's a lot of really fun things happen, including how stop and praise. This horse only gates like five or six steps at a time at the beginning and at the end of the first uh, or the end of the second day's lesson I think is what it is day two and three you see him gating oh, like 50 steps is way way more and so that's really cool to see in just a very short amount of time the change so let's take a look at this video if you have any questions go ahead and comment that's pacing so stop release 
and we're just gonna back up a little. Back, 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 back. Good, nice gate. Perfect, so stop and praise. Well done. Are you backing up to get that hind end under? Two, two reasons, yep, yep. Back up to get the hind end under, and the back up is a diagonal gate, oh. which is the opposite of lateral. So you don't use this exercise with trotty horses. Anybody hear that? Okay. You don't use this exercise with trotty horses. Yep. But it's very important you understand any of the ones we've done for this horse. Yeah. I wrote down, I've been trying to write. Yeah. Yep. Any of the things we're doing with this horse, you don't, except for head down, right? Head down is, you want head down and relax for no matter what breed, trotty. That's just for safety. Yep. Yep. Exactly right. If your horse was trotty, we'd be doing head down still. It wouldn't matter. But all these exercises are for any pacey horse, any breed, but not a trotty horse. They will make them more trotty. Oh. Good job. Yeah, you like standing. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Almost a gate. Not quite. Easy. Good head down. Head down is a good time to ask. Yes. Yes. But if I let him keep going, he would have broken to the pace. Good job. Good job. But it'll be better, even better tomorrow. He'll go farther tomorrow, like we saw with Jack. And you're going to see with more horses this weekend. And you saw with the horses at happenstance. Good job. Good job. Yep. And it's actually, I've been teaching people, it, it is patience, but it's learning to wait. That sounds less scary sometimes than patience. Just learn to wait. Learn to wait. Enjoy. Yep. There, whatever will help you is it works. Just, just wait. There you go. Because it. Almost. Walk. Good job. All right, so that's pacing. So we're stop. Release. Back. Back. Stay straight. Back. Good. Back. Back. Back, good. We'll see if he actually can go into it. Nope. That's a stepping pace, which is a little better than his pace, what he was doing, but we want a, we want a gate. We want a good gate. Back. Back. Stepping pace. Oh, so always release. Back. Good job. Back, back. Keep going back, not sideways. Back, back, back. Nope, not quite. So we'll stop. Release. Back. And again, this is normal, right? You'll have, it's good, it's good, it's good. Okay, now it's not good. <laughs> back, back, back. Yes. And I didn't have to use a whip. He knew what I was about to ask. Okay, so jackpot for that. And he gets to think about that. Like, oh, okay, that, I get it. And they will. This works. Good job. And he's getting it, I think, better than at happenstance. He's doing a good job here. Yeah. Good job. And you have to remember, this horse is, is pretty pacey. We have to help really do whatever we can to help him get into it and then praise him when he does it. So he learns mentally to move those feet differently. <laughs> Is that what he was doing? <laughs> That's so good. You can tell they're gating because I'm smiling. That's what Steph, they're like, just watch Ivy. If she's smiling, it's good. Good job. Here you go. Here you get more. Just keep doing that, big guy. You'll get so many treats. Good job. 
well done. And you notice how he looks when he gets into it. It's like, whew, we're going. It's beautiful. Good job. Yes. Yes, that was right. You don't, you're done right now. Well done. No, we're not going that way. Almost. I'll just walk for that. That was almost it. We'll just walk this way and maybe gate back. Walk on. Easy. Walk slowly. Good. Well done. Good. Yes. <laughs> yep. Whoops. Oh well. We don't we don't really need that now, do we? You're getting it. Thanks. God, it was well trained. But you see, I used it as I needed it, but not I, my goal is once he gets it, like they start to understand and they like doing it. And I've trained plenty of horses without treats. We're just trying to help him figure out the not pacing. I know. Good job. Yeah, and if they keep looking for food, I just do this. They they'll figure out to stop. And just like this, you know, you don't hit them. You just like, and they're like, oh, look at that ear. yeah, hi, look at that ear. Obviously, if your horse is hedge, I don't do that. But otherwise, he's just like, okay, fine. Good job. Here we go. So walk off and yes, good boy. Nice. Well done. There you go. There you go. And then since he hasn't been doing as well going this way, today we're just going to walk this way, calm and relaxed, gate back this way. Good job. There we go. Make it as easy as we can so he starts getting the memory of, oh, go into gate, not pace. Good job. And walk slowly this way. Don't let him speed into a fast walk. Good. <laughs> He's like, okay, I know it's coming. Good. Good job. I just gave him one. That was pretty good, but he stopped pretty quickly. That's all right. I'd rather he was like, I know, I know, I was good. Yeah. Good job. You do it again? Yeah. Took a deep breath. Good. Again, he can't hold it very long yet, but he's doing it every time now. And we haven't had to do any of the stopping and backing up, so, right, we want to praise for that. Yes. That's so good. So good. Good. Yeah. And as he gets better, I stop, I stop using, I mean, I don't use as much. But for now, for this horse to get him to gate, just walk on. We're just going to walk to this end. Good job. Good job. So I want to walk slowly and then it's go forward now. even a little trotty, which I'll take. Yes. Good job. He's totally changing how he moves. Good job. Well done. It'll be easy to get him out of the trot. Like you just, hey, it won't stay in the trot. Good job. Good job. Wait, we're not going. We're not done yet. You want to try this way? No, nope, not quite. Going in this direction, he doesn't have as much impulsion, so that's why we're just walking this way. Come on. Wait, slow down. 
pacing, so stop. Release. Yeah, he's like, oh, okay, no treat this time. He didn't do it right. Back. There we go. Good try, there you go, nice job. So he gated, not as good, so I'll stop and praise, but no treat. Again, I want him to keep looking for the right answer. Good job, good job. Yes. Yep. Good job. Good. Easy. Good. Yeah, that's what we're working toward no matter the breed. Though they may have different names for it. I'm trying to remember what the Rockies call it. I'm not, okay, maybe, easy. So I want him to walk slowly so he doesn't do the camel walk. Yes, good. That's what I want. And, tr and tomorrow will be even better because he's gonna remember this. Good job. Yeah, we'll stop there. That was excellent, I can't wait till tomorrow. That was very good. <laughs> Remember all those all the food she gave me? So I want him just to, to go into gate, but he's got to be like, okay, it's more work to pace. Good job. Walk on. I'll see about a little bit of head down. I want him to walk slowly. Easy. Hey, pay attention to me. Good, I'll take that. That was really close to a good gate. Good job. But what I'm doing is he's got his head pretty low. I'm not really looking for a lot lower, but he's walking slowly. And then I say, go forward. Good job. Yes. Yes. You're going to get there. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Yeah, good job. Good head down. I know you're really good at dropping it when you stand still. So walk slowly, especially for him. Slow walk. Slow. Pacing, so stop. Release. Back, 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 back. Nope, keep going until I tell you not to. There. Yes, good job, good. There you go, good job. That's all you get. What do you think about that? You think about legend? Yeah. So I want him to walk slowly. So when I turn him around, because we're heading to the horses, he wants to walk faster, so I slow him down. No, no. See, so he wants to go over there. Back, back. That's a good head down. Good job. Nice. Yeah. You have to just do that every time and life gets easier, big guy. Good. Easy. Put your head down here. So his head's not high, but I'd like to see it a little bit lower. Come on. Slow down, he wants to walk faster this way, so I slow him down. Yes, yes, 
Nice. He started out a little bit in a stepping pace, and then he, I gave him just a little bit more leg, and then he smoothed out on his own. Yep, the last few steps. Yep, back up. Good job. That was a little bit of a stepping pace. Easy. Walk, walk. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And so it's kind of um, a dichotomy or it's opposites where I want him to walk slowly, but then when he goes faster, he can't be like kind of pokey, lazy. He's got to be like, go, but not, we're not rushing, right? We're not going really fast. And it's weird because it's a balance between too fast and too slow. Good job. Here you go. Yes. Yes. We love it when they just go into it. Yes, yes, and he honestly might be able to hold it a little bit longer than he is doing, but I want to stop and praise before he breaks, because he's, I mean, he's gating a little bit there. Good job, good job. So I walk slowly, I don't let him just walk fast, walk slowly. Yes, yes, good boy, good job, Gator, yes, yeah. What do you think it was? Yep, a little bit trotty, but because this horse has been so pacey, we're okay with it, but I was lifting my hands, yes. That's not, that's pacing there, ho. Oh. So anytime he is pacing, but it's okay. We don't want him to stay trotting. So I was asking him to not trot, but I'd rather have him do that than just pace, pace, pace everywhere. Yep, and then he got pacey. There we go, almost. He got, he was good for a couple steps and then he got pacey. So we'll stop. Yeah, you don't get a treat yet. Back, back, back. Yes, 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 yes. Good boy. Good job. There you go. Good. Well done. Good job, Gator. Yep. Yes, good job. Right by the camera, oh well. Good. Yeah. So the trick is, he's, he's starting to figure out we don't want him to pace. And so anytime he does get a little trotty, I do. I just take my reins and I just lift a little bit and he kind of smooths out. Good job. Yeah. It could be, because because there's a lot of horses that I've worked with that gate, even for be gate slowly. Right. But for him, since he is a lazier horse, and that's what we're seeing the last couple days, I give a good amount of energy. Like it's not just a well, I kind of go. It's like go, yeah. and then he pops into that gate. So, so it for him, it is faster. There's lots of horses that I work with. I'm trying to think which horse. I think. The horses gain speed pretty quickly, but a lot of horses will gait slowly. Right. Like I it'll know, be. Like Pasatinos look like they're not moving at all. Like yeah, but exactly. I think what's helping me is noticing that when these horses are having an even four beat gait, it just looks like it has more energy. Than yeah, it should. Yes, it should because it does take more work, but it should be everything should be lifting and moving right. better together. Like revving your car engine. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Good job, Gator. He's walking slowly. Yeah, perfect. It was perfect. Yes. But he was walking slowly. 
This is way more gating than at happenstance even, so this is good. So just walk slowly. He wants to walk fast. Slow. Trot. Yes. Good job. Yes. Yes. Trot. No, he went to the trot. A few steps of gate. Then he went to the trot. And then he went back to the gate. Because I lifted my hands up a little bit. Then he went back to the gate. Yeah. So walk slowly. No, a little bit pacey there. So we'll stop. Back up. Just a few steps. Back. 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 Because you can do this on a trail, too. Yep. Yeah. Good job. Nice. Good job. Okay. That was watching this horse learn to gait, but he was one that definitely needed impulsion. So we got a couple questions. Rebecca says, thank you for the videos. Cynthia says, what is the name of the saddle you're riding in? Um, I don't know. It does look like a treeless saddle, but I ride in whatever the owners put on, so I'm not sure. Sorry. April says, my spotted saddle horse is one speed outside of the round pen, and that is fast. I need to slow her down. Yes, April, I basically would not work on anything else until you got her to do head down and slow down, even if that was working right outside the round pen. Uh, Pamela says... It's so crazy when I'm watching you ride, I can see exactly what's going on. But when I'm riding, I can't seem to tell for sure. I tend to stop and praise, maybe even when he didn't get it exactly right. Is that going to confuse him? So here's the thing. What's worse than stopping and praising for the wrong thing is never stopping and praising. Literally, that is worse. The horse never gets a break, never gets a chance to think. Is it better if your timing is really good? Yes. But I would rather you stop and praise and not be sure if you got it right, but you are stopping and praising than to never stop and praise. What I, rec what I tell people is I have an educated butt. Most years I ride 90 to 100 different gated horses. And because of that, I can usually tell very well when the horse is gating. However, even when I'm working on the gate, I like to go on a hard surface. Like this is the driveway, it's not perfect, but you guys could see and hear it and feel it. If there's any kind of a bounce, then it's not a gate. That's a really good measurement, is if there's any kind of a bounce, it's not a good gate. Now, whether it's trotty or pacey it can be harder to tell. If you're not sure, add more energy or more speed. And if your horse slowly went from the pace into a faster speed and put his head up, I'm gonna guarantee he's pacing. If the head is up, generally speaking, and it's bouncy, they're probably pacing. Um, Marla says, my horse knows, good job. I also tell her she is so awesome. Uh, that's, that's good, but I still advocate for stop and praise, even if your horse knows, good job. And even if you combine it with food like I do with this horse, that's stop and praise. Uh, let's see. Just a minute. April says, she's also saying it's crazy, uh, replying to Pamela's comment. She says, I'm the same way. When I'm riding, I can't tell what gate or what lead I'm on. I have none, no one who can tell me to ride my horse. Okay, so one of the things I advocate is actually videoing yourself. This helps so much. You see flaws, you see what gate the horse is doing. Everybody has cell phones that have the ability to video and you can prop them up somewhere. You don't even need a fancy video recorder. Just prop it up, video yourself riding in front a few times, asking for head down or gate and see what you get. Uh, and ride on hard surfaces so you can hear it. I don't know how many times I need to say that. Now, I do know some people still struggle with hearing it even on the hard surfaces, and, but practice and video yourself. Um, bu bu April says she does head down and slow inside, but as soon as she's out, she's out of control. And that's okay. You need to practice slow down and head down outside the round pen, even if it's 10 feet away from the round pen and you stay there and you do circles. Remember, circles is part of head down training. Jan says, when would you quit giving treats? I would quit giving treats when the horse is gating amazing all the time. And what you, if you watch my, my DVDs, uh, or even on the, the private training group, if you watch the videos where you get to see more than just one day, uh, with time, I start feeding for just five steps, and then I start feeding for 20 steps, and then I feed for 50 steps, and then I feed for 100. Now, 
Uh, recently, I was at a clicker training clinic with Shauna Karash, and she gets the question all the time. People that are interested in clicker training, their first question is, when can I stop feeding treats? And Shauna says, and I'm trying to remember the exact quote. I think I wrote it down on my phone, maybe, because it's such a big deal. Everybody asks this question, like, when can we stop feeding treats? And her answer and mine is, why would you want to? Your horse is giving you something. So you always want to be asking the horse for more. You want to basically up the game. And that is very true. I don't want my horse just to gate for 10 feet every time. I want him to gate for a mile. And I gradually feed treats for doing it longer and longer. But if my horse gives me a faster gate or a perfectly smooth gate on a completely loose rein and it was amazing, I'll still stop and feed for treats. Same thing with my horse, uh, Jackson. He can do a bunch of tricks, rear, lay down, bow, give kisses, uh, smile, give hugs, I mean, excuse me, so many things, and he will do it whether I have food or not. But I give him so much food because I want him to continue wanting to do it. Uh, let's see, see if I can find. Okay, so one of the quotes she said, horses make choices that serve them best. The thing that is the strongest reinforcement uh, it, they want. They do the thing that is the strongest reinforcement. They get the thing they want or avoid the thing they don't want. So if, if gating is always just seems like work to them, why would they do it? But if they have, they know there's a, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if they know there's a chance they might get a treat, they will work harder. This is um, a little bit morbid, but it was a very interesting study that was done that I want to share with you because it kind of highlights how powerful the motivator is when given randomly or not, not you know, every 10 feet when you start to vary it. So there was a study done with, they took two rats and they put them in water so they had to swim. And the first time they did this, the rats swam about 15 minutes before they gave up and the rescuer saved them. The next day, they put those two rats, same two rats, in water again. Do you know how many hours the rats were swimming before they gave up? 60 hours. Six zero. Because they knew, those rats, from one experience, they knew that they were going to get rescued. And so they were able to keep swimming until uh, for, a, for a much longer time. So imagine that you treat your horse and then you start randomly treating. You treat for, for one step and then you treat for 20 steps and then you treat for 200 and sometimes you treat for 20. That horse is never going to know when he's going to get a treat and he's going to give you lots of effort. So that's what my solution is for those people that are like, I don't want my horse to just stop all the time. They won't. Uh, Pamela says, great. Thanks for the answer. You're welcome. I know some of these answers people don't like. So for Pamela or no, for, uh, not Pamela, sorry, April, who says her horse goes fast outside the round pen, the answer is actually to do the head down and slow down training outside the round pen and make that part of your training program. You can work on it in the round pen first and then you go outside. And if they're completely uncontrollable, go back in the round pen and then go back outside. And a lot of times people don't like it that the answer is do more training. Megan says, how do you decide when to increase the amount of steps you're asking them to gate before giving a reward? Uh, great question. There's no one answer. The biggest thing to remember is that if your horse can't gate longer than 10 steps, don't expect to reward for 11, reward for 8 or 9. When, and, and the thing is, horses will just gate more. Like that horse there, I didn't make him gate. I don't make horses gate. He was able to gate on his own. And so when he held it longer... I gave him a treat. When I felt him get pacey, I stopped him before he got pacey. Does that make sense? Uh, April says, I have no control over outside the pen. So April, just, just for clarification, one, if you could get a video, that would help. Two, can you go in a circle right outside the round pen? Can you, can you make a circle? Um, and I mean a small circle, like a five foot circle. And I, of course, stay safe. I don't want you to get hurt. Clearly this horse has some holes in her training, uh, and you may need uh, someone to help you maybe put her on the lunge line if there's someone that you trust um, Megan says it does make sense asking how many how do you increase the steps I'm glad uh, April can you do groundwork outside the pen she says no she puts head up grabs the bit and tries to take off um, so April uh, you may need to try other bits you may need a professional to put a little bit of time on her outside the round pen um, can you do groundwork outside the round pen is she super calm out there 
Um, you can work on head down on the ground and lunging and for slow and relaxed. And I have a, a free video about that. Maybe I'll, I'll share that. Uh, you could try that. Otherwise, I'm not quite sure what to tell you without seeing what she's doing. And if your riding ability isn't up for a horse like her, then even getting someone to put, you know, two weeks on could make a big difference. And you can, you can explain exactly what you're looking for, which is very helpful as a trainer. When I have someone come to me and say, you know, this horse is great in the round pen or arena, but as soon as you go outside, they want to take off. And I want someone to put, to train this horse to walk outside the round pen and be calm. Like that's really great. I tried a gated trainer, she came back lame with no progress. Tried a regular trainer, she came back same, still they gave up. <laughs> uh, I'm very sorry. Hopefully they give you your money back. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, it sounds awful. I'm glad you have sent her some trainers. So what I would ask you to do, if you can do this safely, is if you can get a video of it uh, in the round pen, and I'm just gonna ask it, you're probably gonna say she does it. At, in the round pen, can you do uh, walk, gate, canter, uh, all relaxed. Uh, the second thing is, do you have another pasture that's just a little bit bigger than the round pen that you can ride in, just in the pasture? Um, and how is she doing groundwork outside the round pen? Because that would be where I would work. I believe she's perfect inside the round pen. Uh, a lot of, uh, I, I believe you, like, that's fine. But can you do groundwork outside and is she perfect? Which would be interesting. Again, I would more, I don't want you to get hurt, so I'm not asking you to get a video. I can't help you without seeing the horse more, um, and I want you to be safe. Uh, outside the round pen is a smaller paddock, is still a smaller paddock. Okay, so she goes out of control in there. Um, basically, it sounds like you do need someone who is a good trainer to work with you, uh, because I don't want to give you more advice over the internet that could potentially get you hurt. Thank you for answering all of those questions. Feel free to message me if you want more specific things. Valerie says, that would be a great video for us to learn from too, April. Yeah, well, I mean, and if you live in Texas or you want to bring her here, I'll give you some lessons. But since, you know, most people don't live in Texas, it's not a great option. Uh, okay, so any other questions about the video? We want to work on slow down and head down but with the pacey horse, but you notice in that video, I also worked very much on slowing that gelding down, slowing him down and then going fast. And that's super important. And a lot of people miss that, but hopefully anybody that watched this video got it. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, Jan says, seems like treats would motivate a bracy horse or slow down a racehorse. That's true. So on my private training group, uh, there's a horse that it's fairly green. He's not young, but he's green and he wouldn't stand still and he was whinnying at all the other horses. Very distracted, not paying any attention to the rider. After working on head down for maybe 10 minutes, I start giving him treats and the difference in his demeanor is amazing. You can watch that video on the private training group and it, and I've done it with other horses that were extremely nervous, is giving them a bunch of food at the beginning and then they start paying attention and realizing they can relax. And uh, I don't know that it would fix a bracy horse. I use food a lot because it is one of the most powerful motivators that a horse has. So people ask, why do I use it? Because it works, because horses understand it. Uh, one of the, the quotes I like from Shauna is she says, and she's obviously using a clicker, which is a brake signal, bridge signal, and it marks it. But she says that uh, clarity brings relaxation. So the more the horse understands what we're asking, because we can be perfectly clear, the more the horse can relax because they're not trying to figure out what we want. I believe that so many of us, when we're training, the horses are desperately trying to figure out what we want. And when they can't figure it out, it makes them frustrated. And Frustration, you know, gets horses nervous and upset and they don't relax. So her, her quote was, clarity brings relaxation. And that's one of the reasons I use stop and praise is it brings clarity to the horse by stopping when they gate and letting them sit there for a couple minutes. They start to realize how much, what that's what we're asking. Because before that, uh, I say, how does the horse know to go into gate? How does he know he can do, he can do walk? Flat walk, running walk, pace, stepping pace, saddle gate, fox trot, broken trot, trot. That's like eight things he can do, not counting the canter and the gallop. How does he know which one of those you want him to do? How? How? No one can answer this. 
And so my solution is that when the horse does well, we make it very clear by stopping and letting them stand for one to two minutes or longer that that's what we wanted them to do. Uh, April says she came back from the trainer a week ago. I have her in the round pen and go out every day in the afternoon and sit on the mounting block and we talk and she gets scratches and love and, and she's a total sweetheart because she's in the round pen. I'm going to just do that for a month before I attempt to ride her. Great. And you can also do that in the paddock around the round pen, not riding her, but just letting her be out there, feeding her, working on head down. You can do clicker training to build that relationship with her, build that relaxation. That's a great idea. I think that's a wonderful idea. Good job. Okay, let me know if you have any other questions. I will answer. Headed to Pennsylvania tomorrow, so no more live videos this week. Maybe not any next week because week after I'm in uh, Florida for a clinic. So I hope you guys have a great week, weekend, couple weeks, whatever it ends up being. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys would share this video, that would help just so much. And uh, you guys, you got this. It's a struggle, but you got this.